Okay, if you calculus A, B, J62, um, these are the answers to the evens, which I believe I put online, so you should hopefully already check them, but here they are again, real quick. If you need more time, then you should pause it and check your answers as the evens. Uh, units are important, and you have units, right units. So these are the answers. Um, there were two odd problems which are in the back of the book. So here are those answers again real quick. Pause it if you need to. So let's go ahead and do these problems. So, so you know, got some more practice with relay, relay rates in general and some cones, I think, are starting to pop up. So let's see. Okay, number two is, uh, they give you equation, so this is kind of like the first ones from the previous assignment, x plus 4y equals 3, and it says a, given that dx dt equals 1, find dy dt when x equals 2. So I at least write that stuff down, summarize problem, in part a, so that's part a. So we gotta take the derivative of this uh, implicitly with respect to time, dx dt plus four dy dt equals zero. And this is what we're trying to find, right? So we can plug this in there and then we can solve. So four dy dt equals negative two divided by four dy dt equals negative one half. Okay. Uh, part B uh, says given that dy dt equals four, find dx dt when x equals three. <clears throat> So we could use the same, you know, or we just redo it, dx dt, take the derivative implicitly, or dy dt equals zero. <clears throat> so this time we're looking for dx dt, and we know dy dt is four, and x doesn't even come into this, right? I mean, let's see, I messed up. that. And I feel like the last one, what did I do with the last one? Oh, shoot, the last one, I actually messed up. That's a that's supposed to be a one. That's a one, it should be a one fourth. One fourth. Um, <clears throat> I made the mistake of trying, of using x equals two. It doesn't even show up in here. It doesn't even show up on this one either, so. Sometimes you get some extra information. So dy dt equals negative 16. No units on these. So let's see, number four, similar kind of problem, x squared plus y squared equals two x. And part A says, given that dx dt equals negative two, find dy dt. And, uh, and then it says when x, y, so they're actually giving x and y equals 1, 1. Okay, so we got to take derivative uh, implicitly 2x d to the first power rule dx dt. That's chain rule implicit plus 2y dy dt equals 2. No, um, to dx dt. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this time we actually do need the x and the y. So we didn't last time. So x is 1, dx dt is negative 2, y is 1, dy dt is what we're looking for, equals 2, dx dt is negative 2. So it's going to be... Um, 
and we can simplify it. So it's going to be uh, negative 4 plus 2 dy dt equals negative 4. So we could add 4 to both sides. And we get 2 dy dt equals 0. And divide by 2, and you get dy dt equals 0. So that's part A. I think I'm going to do part B right here. So part B, zoom in, says given that dy dt equals uh, 3, find dx dt and Let's see, dx dt. It says, when, oh, this is gross. xy equals 2 plus root 2 over 2, and then root 2 over 2. Now, I'm predicting it'll come out nice. Well, that's kind of ugly right now. Now, so we have the same uh, implicit derivative, 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt. Uh, equals 2 dx dt. All right, so x is 2 plus root 2 over 2, gross. dx dt is what we're looking for. Plus y is root 2 over 2. dy dt is 3. And then we have another dx dt, which is what we're what we're looking for. So this is a bit messy. Um, the twos cancel nicely. Okay, we want to bring our dx dt's on the same side. So if we do that, and then we factor out the dx dt, we have a two plus two root two, and then we get a minus two. Then we move these the other side, minus three root two. Two minus two cancels out. It's really starting to look nicer. And then you would divide both sides by remaining root 2 and you get negative 3. So worked out nice in the end. Okay, number 7 uh, says let B be the volume of a cylinder with high H radius R and assume that H and R vary with time. How are DVDT, DHDT, and DRDT related? So volume of a cylinder is pi R squared H. We draw a little picture <clears throat> they have equal bases, congruent bases. There's a radius and a height. That formula I feel like is a lot easier to remember because it's like the same as like a rectangular prism. Um, so how are they related? Well, we would have to take the derivative with respect to time. So dv dt equals, we got to do a product rule here. So we could do pi r squared times dh dt. Pi is just a number. Plus... Um, pi h times the derivative of r squared would be 2r dr dt. So that is how they are related. I mean, we could clean it up or whatever. I don't know. I don't know if in the back of the book they took a pi or something out of everything. I don't know. Whatever. This is not, this is not necessarily. So... I don't know, something like that. I think that's what the book has. Whatever, either way. Okay, um, part B says, uh, so they're kind of leading you through it still. At a certain instance, the height is uh, six inches and is increasing dh dt. The height is increasing dh dt positive one inch per second. While the radius is 10, Radius is 10, and uh, dr dt, um, um, okay, um, so dr dt is, it says that the radius is decreasing at one inch per second. Now, they don't give you a negative, but they say decreasing, so you better put a negative on there. 
Decreasing is negative, in, uh, increasing is positive. That's an easy thing to miss. So um, it says, how fast is the volume changing at the instance? Is the volume increasing or decreasing at the instance? So we're looking for DVDT, essentially. We're looking for DVDT. So uh, we have this expression <clears throat> that we wrote. Pi, the radius is 10 squared. DH, DT is positive 1. I always write the plus and the minus pi. H is 6 uh, times 2 times R is 10. DR, DT is negative 1. So we plug everything in. Now we just have to simplify it. So we get 100 pi, and then this is going to be 120 minus 120 pi. So that's going to be negative 20 pi. The units are going to be inches cubed per second. Okay, so it comes out negative, and then they said, is it increasing or decreasing? Well, it, it, because it's negative, it is decreasing. All right, so there you go. That's number seven. Number 12 says a stone is dropped in a still pond, sends out circular ripple whose radius increases at a constant rate of three feet per second. So if you drop a stone in the water, it sends out ripples, right? And so it, it's, a, it's a radius that's increasing. It says uh, the radius increases at a constant rate of three feet per second. So that's dr dt equals three feet per second, and it's positive. How rapidly is the area enclosed in the ripple increasing at the end of 10 seconds? So they're saying, well, area, dA dt, what is that? when time equals 10 seconds. It's kind of weird that they gave us actual time. So we need a we need a relationship between A and R. So that's A equals pi R squared, area of the circle. We've got to take the derivative of it implicitly. dA dt equals 2 pi R to the first power, dr dt. And so let's see, dA dt equals 2 pi, we don't know what r is, dr dt is positive 3, so what's r? It's not 10, it says after 10 seconds, but if it increases 3 feet per second, then, then what would the radius be after 10 seconds? 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 for each second, the radius is going to have to be 30, right? So you got to be a little creative there. So dA dt equals, let's see, uh, 60, 180 pi. The units should be area. So um, the units are feet squared per second. All right, uh, let's see, 25. is a cone problem. Okay, so 25 says a conical water tank with vertex down has a radius of 10 feet at the top. So let's draw a picture. Conical water tank uh, says vertex down. Kind of makes sense for a water tank. And so then you have your radius. Okay, now it says it's the radius is 10 feet at the top. So we'll say 10 feet here. And it's 24 feet high. So this is 24 feet high. Um, okay, so that's just the dimensions of the overall tank. It says if water flows into the tank, so I like to draw a little arrow right here, into the tank at 20 cubic feet per minute. Now, right away, you should think, oh, that's dVdt. They're giving you the rate of change of volume. All right, it's a amount, like three-dimensional amount. Um, how fast is the depth of the water increasing? The depth, depth is like the height. So you could think there's a certain amount of fluid in it, and there's a height and a radius. So we're looking for dH dt. Now, it should be negative, right? 
should be, it says how fast is the water depth of water increasing when the water is 16 feet deep. So that's when H equals 16 feet. So um, we need a relationship. So volume of a cone for, uh, is one third pi r squared h. Now, like I was talking about in class, uh, you really want to get this in terms of all one variable right away with these similar triangles. So we're gonna do, um, <clears throat> let's see, we're gonna do r over h equals 10 over 24. And since we're looking for DHT and we have H, then we want all H's <clears throat> in our equation. So we're gonna replace R with, we could reduce it to 5 twelfths H, right? I'm gonna plug that in for R before we do any calculus. You don't have to, but this is, you're gonna to have to use this anyways. It's easier to use it right at the beginning. Now be careful because everything about R gets squared, including the 5 twelfths. So your new volume equation is going to be, it's going to be kind of messy. It's, uh, let's see. Well, hold on a second. Um, let's just make sure. Yeah, so um, I'm not going to simplify all this just yet. I don't think because, um, I don't know. I'm probably gonna have to reduce it when I plug some numbers anyway. So I'm gonna say, I, mean, I think we do 25 pi h cubed over three times 144. I'm just gonna keep that three times 144. Otherwise it's a big number, I'm gonna have to reduce it later. So finally we're ready for calculus. So we're gonna take the derivative with respect to time implicitly. So it's gonna be, uh, dv dt equals, now the three in the front, the three comes out in front because of the power rule, right? And so, and then we already have a three in the bottom and those cancel very nicely. So there we go. Um, and we have, the, we have the height, so we're gonna go ahead and plug that in, uh, 25 pi, and h is 16 squared, it's really big. Now I'm gonna do 144 is 12 times 12 real quick. And this is 16 times 16. And so then uh, we take a four out of this, and a four out of this, and a four out of this. I'm just trying to make this easier to do in my head. So we have 16 times 25, it's still a pretty big number. Um, well that's 100, 400, 400 pi over nine. Did I do that right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, shoot. We're looking for DHDT. And I totally messed up. I forgot about the, all right. It's good to see me make mistakes. I forgot about the DHDT. Forgot about the implicit derivative. Totally messed that up. This is actually what we want. We have the rate of change of the volume. So that's gonna be positive 20 and then 25 pi, uh, you plug 10, uh, 16 in for the height. Um, DHDT, so um, we, could, we could reduce it like I was doing before, just to make it easier right now. Um, take a four out of that, and this, and a four out of that, and this. And so then DHDT, equals 20, and then you're gonna multiply by the reciprocal of this, it's gonna be nine over uh, 16 times 25 pi. And we could reduce this some more, four comes out of that five times, and four times, and five comes out of that five times. So we finally get the HDT equals nine over 20 pi. It's a lot of messy algebra there, or just arithmetic. Now the units are height, so it should be one dimensional units of feet per minute. And it is, it should have come out negative. I think. Oh no, it is positive because we're filling the tank. Totally makes sense.
probably makes sense. All right. Okay, on to the next one. Um, we have what, two more, 26 and 32. <clears throat> so 26 says, greenest point from a shoot at a rate of eight feet, cubic feet per minute forms a conical pile whose altitude always is twice its radius. How fast is the altitude of the pile increasing at the instance when the pile is six feet tall? So it's a, you could, <clears throat> green is pouring out and it's forming this pile, this conical pile, okay? That has a height and a radius. And it says that it's pouring from a chute at a rate of eight cubic feet per minute. So this is DVDT. And for us, it is positive because we're increasing the volume. <clears throat> then it says, how fast is the altitude of the pile? Well, that's the height, right? So we're looking for dH dt uh, when the pile is six feet high. Now, this one's a little different uh, than the similar triangles idea. In fact, they, they kind of give you what you need. They told you that the altitude is always twice the radius. So you should write that down. So this is just all the information from the problem. That's it. I haven't, I haven't tried to do anything yet. Just try to draw a picture and label it. So we're looking for DHCT. So we need a volume formula for a cone, or for, yeah, for a cone, which is uh, one third pi r squared h. And then usually you will want to get in one variable, and we do similar triangles, but this time <clears throat> we have this to help us. Now we want all h because we're looking for DHT, they gave us H, so we want to replace R with H over two, right? From H equals two R, I can write R equals H over two, because then when I plug that in, I have all H's, which works for what I'm trying to do. So H over two in parentheses, it's got to all get squared. So this is gonna be uh, pi over 12 H cubed. So now we take the derivative with respect to time, uh, pi over four h squared dh dt. I'm not gonna forget this time. And we're looking for dh dt. We have dv dt is positive eight. Uh, we have the h, the height is six, right? Um, so this is gonna be 36, this is gonna be a nine. So dH dt equals eight over nine pi. The units will be feet to the first power, because it's just one dimensional length, over time is minutes. And it came up positive, which it should, because it should be getting taller and taller as the, as the pile increases. Okay, 32 uh, says a man six feet tall is walking at a rate of three feet per second towards the street light. This is like the one we did in the notes a couple days ago. Uh, street light, 18 feet high, see a company figure at what rate is the shadow of length? So even though they've given you a picture, you should draw it because you're gonna ride all over it. So we have, we have a man walking towards a street lamp. It's casting a shadow. I'm assuming it's going to be a shadow problem. Okay, it says he is six feet tall. Uh, he's walking at a rate of three feet per second towards the street lamp. So I'm going to write that arrow, show the motion. Obviously, we're getting right triangles here, similar triangles. Uh, the street lamp is 18 feet tall. <clears throat> And it says, at what rate is his shadow length changing? So we have to create a variable here for the shadow length and, and then say, okay, well, that's what we're looking for. And then this right here is going to be tied to this length right here. So I'm going to put a Y right here, and I'm going to say that's dy dt. But in this case right here, it is negative because it's, it's getting closer. Y is getting smaller for sure. So the relationship comes from similar triangles. Right, so similar triangles, um, we could say x over six, this over this equals this over this, x plus y over 18. 
Now, I personally would clean this up before we, I'd cross multiply. I'd get the X's together at, I don't know, any of this is gonna be easier than after you take the derivative. Since we're looking for DX ET, we could get X by itself if you, if you want. So I haven't done any calculus yet. Now the calculus comes in derivative with respect to time. So dy dt, um, and we know dy dt is negative three. And so we get negative one fourth, the units, and did I make a mistake? Let's just double check. Um, let's see. For some reason, this, this isn't working out right now. So, um, oh shoot. This is supposed to have a six right here, All right? I forgot to distribute the six, dumb. Okay, so this is y over two, y over two, this should be two, this should be two. So the answer is negative three halves. And the units are feet per second. So that's our answer, okay? Negative three halves feet per second. Part B says, how fast is the tip of the shadow moving? So the tip of the shadow, <clears throat> I'm gonna draw a new picture for part B. Um, so my other picture is kind of messy. So the tip of the shadow is like this. How fast is it moving relative to the street lamp? We just did the just the length of the shadow. So we need a variable for this whole thing. I'm gonna call it Z. Now we still have X and Y that we could use, right? So Z equals X plus Y. So then DZ DT equals DX DT plus DY DT. <clears throat> and this is what we're looking for. Now we already figured these out from the last problem, right? DX DT is no matter what, negative three halves feet per second. DY DT is negative three. So dz dt uh, equals uh, negative um, nine halves feet per second, or negative four and a half, or 4.5. Now for this, I would say, I would get rid of the negative for my answer. I'd say that the tip of the shadow is moving at a rate of positive four and a half feet per second towards the street lane. The street light. <clears throat> The negative came up because we tied it to the dis the length of the distance between the tip of the shadow and the strength was decreasing. But as far as like motion, you kind of want to describe the direction. Negative would often imply left direction, which is not the case here. The negative came up for a different reason. So there you go. <clears throat>